we were now here on anchor watch and you can see that blue boat is now settling with the current the tide is coming in so it's now setting more with the current it has a huge queue um, and there's a cat on the other side of it was also struggling quite a lot so let me give you some anchor tips in this episode and um, but first we will do anchor under sail we will show that to you and then we will talk about all of these caveats that's happening here um, and what you need to look out for so this is this is a little bit just about tips feel the spray of the waves on my face okay Pietro is going to take up the challenge i did the uh, under sail one a few days ago so she wants to do it as well under sail so she's going to do everything she's now getting the anchor loose so that we know okay the anchor can go Okay, so the idea is that 17 meters and we need to go to 10 meters yeah, across Yeah, around turning. 10. Our chart here, we don't have a chart for the Black Sea, so this one is basically getting, <laughs> it stops right there, like abruptly stop. So we're using now the one on the tablet. And we're waiting for 10 meters, so it's still a while to go to 10 meters. 16. And we're doing about 3.4 knots in... Oh, yeah, the wind is also not going to be in Pietro's favor. <laughs> but let's see how she's doing. We reached 10 meters. She's going to put it now in manual mode. And good, she's ordering up. The idea is we need to keep sailing through the wind to zero. But we need the sails to keep on working and that's why she's hauling it up. She's going to keep on turning, turning, turning till the boat goes to zero. But in the meanwhile at around 30, I guess she needs to start filling, but keep on, keep on sailing to zero. Main sheets loose. Okay, full, 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 beyond zero. That's it, almost into the wind. Look at that, perfect. Into the wind. Furling, 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 furling. Ah! Hopefully, she will have to sail in before we drop the anchor. Yeah, drop, 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 drop. Okay. We already at point six. So hopefully the anchor will reach the bottom before we go backwards. Looking good, looking good. Eight meters. Oh, and she's doing a lot of stuff here. The main sheets are open. The main is basically depowered. Okay, we're going backwards. We start going backwards. I can see we start moving. Okay, stop the anchor a little bit so that we can keep our... It seems like the bow wants to start falling off. Maybe you can bring the main back in. Center of the room. So we can use the main sail now to, to feather the boat to stay bow into the wind so the wind will push the main back that's it that's it okay looks like we're going backwards are we yeah no, we're going sideways sideways yeah. okay i see the bow is busy moving the bow is moving look at this so the 
the wind is pushing the main so the idea is that we don't want we don't want the anchor because the anchor is now going if you see there through there it's going like that so we don't want it to actually scratch the bows so we want the anchor to go more like that so we are swinging now okay i think the anchor is good you can let go a little bit so we are swinging around the anchor yeah You can you can lock it so we can see whether it's working. Now let's see if the anchor is is pulling tight. It's pulling up. You can see it's pulling up. Very green water. Then we're going straight. It's pulling. Okay. We need to see whether we are moving or not. So we just align one fixture to one of the coastlines in between us. And we're not moving. Chain is tight, it's good. Okay, bridle time. Okay, 10 meter bridle, so we need to let our 10 meter chain. I'm feeling quite useless here, she's doing quite good. Here we go. So, we have a chain counter over here. 52. It needs to go to 52 apparently. Good. <laughs> well we got, done. Now we need to drop the main. Now let's drop the main. <laughs> Can I have you up front? <laughs> yes. Now for the anchor drag alarm. So what we normally do is we go to alarms, navigation, anchor drag. First you have to switch it on, stupid. Then recenter alarm. Then we set the radius. Peter was doing 50 meters. I think we can make it say zero, zero, 060. Done. So that's now 60 meters. Now we just need to put the edit alarm area and move the center. So I guess it's that I'm going to guess now it's going to be somewhere there. Set it done i'm sure it's going to wake me up at night again and there we go alarm is on so we anchored over there and as you can see the wind that yellow one is coming from this side so it it's supposed to give us some protection and the big swells was this direction and last night when we anchored the, the wind was also that direction but there was a small swell coming around this corner and then bent up and going into this bay. And if you look, we have, we've moved down a little bit, but, or not moved, we swing a little bit, but there's the land and there's the point. And there's a couple of reefs there, which is now these, these green things here. But it still have enough space to, to come up across this bay. And then the waves is making then this kind of ripples going up like this. And the wind is coming from that direction. As you can see, a little bit more, last night was a little bit more to the, to the east. But in that case, the wind is pushing you so, so, and the wind is turning us like this. And then you're going to get the waves coming up broadside and you will get 
<laughs> get a very uncomfortable ride by doing this the whole time. I think manuals have the same issue but just with bigger ways. So what we did was first thing is I brought the, the steering way over so you can see it's all the way to the to the side. But also I brought the boom out. So if you look like this, the boom is way, way, way out that side. So if the wind pushes against the boom, it will try to feather. And if it feathers, then we will, the CC will turn the same, same direction. So this is another measure that we tried. And then the biggest one is, we, is this. It looks like a little bit of a mess now, but this is the anchor bridle here. So I just shorten it by putting it onto, onto that cleat. So one of the anchor bridles, this, one of the legs is very, very shorter. So it just means that we're actually hanging on this one line here. The other anchor bridle leg is just going hanging, dangling, and doesn't do much. But it might that Sisu is trying to always going in this direction because of the bridle pulling only on the one side and because of that we actually now if you can see here's the waves coming this way instead of catching them like this we actually just move a little bit like this so we're going like this motion over it like a cross axle a 4x4 cross axle and it makes it much more comfortable and we could sleep otherwise this would have been a very very bad anchorage and i could see on navionics many people complained about it because they the wind is normally coming from that direction but the waves is coming from this direction coming around that point and that makes it super super uncomfortable it is really not a good thing to have the, the waves coming on your broadside. Another anchor tip, maybe tides and wind runs in different places different, differently. So, for example, we're now here at Nantucket and if you look just here, so we are swinging that way. This boat is this way, that catamaran is also very different. So the big thing between catamarans and manuals, they are they swing very different. But <laughs> now check this guy. He's even looking for us. And behind him is a is a Utrimer that's actually facing us. While the wind is coming very strong from that side, about 12, 12 to 17 knots. And the reason is, there's a tide running from there all the way out here. And that is different where we are, we are anchored. It's different where those guys are anchored. It's also very different where these guys are anchored. And that's why the Utremer is already pointing, or actually from the beginning, pointing in. It's pointing into the wind. Because there's not enough there's not enough current to swing it but we are in a current this boat here is in the current and now you can see that catamaran at the back there is also battling so be aware that when you anchor it's not necessarily where the boats are facing is where the anchors are so if you look at that one over there the snapper and the anchor points backwards, so it's like this. The anchor is somewhere here. Our anchor, <laughs> believe it or not, is somewhere there, even though that we are pointing this way. So our anchor is on that side. So the current pushes us this way, but the wind will very soon push us that way because the current will swing. And then it will be a different story again. So stay on the boat check it out don't just rush off i mean 
Nantucket is right there. <laughs> and we've heard only good stuff from, from Nantucket. So everyone told us, we have to come to Nantucket. You have to come to Nantucket. Now we are here, but we cannot go because it's a big boat, same scope, all of us, it's the same scope, but we are swinging like crazy. So we swing now according to the wind. You can see the wind is now more or less coming from the front. And that boat, you can see it's right opposite than us. Um, so I started the engines. The engines is, is on for in case I need to get away from that boat. Because we anchored after them. So that guy can just sit back, kind of like relax, <laughs> and but check him out. Our stern is facing that way, that one facing that way, the power bow to the back facing the same way than us, and this is five minutes later. So the monos are swinging definitely very different than us. If you look here, if you, if you look on this side, so most of these boats is facing almost the same way as we do, up to the Utreme, Utreme, and basically with the wind. You can see the cat at the back there, it's also trying to face the wind. There's still a little bit of a tide coming out, small tide still running out which affects this big keel of this boat quite a lot. The big thing is currents, wind is different in different places, especially like here, it's very obvious. And then also monorails and catamarans, they swing differently because of the windage. So we have much more, as a cat, has a, a much bigger windage, so it means the wind pushes us much more than the current will push us and because we don't have deep keels the current doesn't have that big effect then these guys that have a very deep keel and so the, they they more for the current than we are okay while i'm here on anchor watch <laughs> so we're much further than we are now i think so the wind is from the front uh, we are at the right distance from our chain. That guy is moving quite far that side, so he's between. I think they have a problem over there. I think we're good. But just warn me if we're getting too close to that. Let me put you like this. Then you can warn me if we get too close to the blue boat. You see the blue boat over there? Shout when you see the blue boat. Or comment below. Start your engine or something like that. Let's talk about Bohemian mooring or Bohemian anchoring. So what that means is when the current is flipping this way, this way, you will either be dragged this way or if it flips, you will be dragged the same way. 180 degrees kind of problem. So <clears throat> what you do is you anchor basically. You go forward, drop the anchor, go backwards to the anchor length, the road length that you want to set, put your, um, set the anchor, so back off on the anchor, make sure it sets, then take out more scope, more road, anchor road out, or chain road out, to where you're going to drop your secondary anchor, and then you come back up to your um, middle point, you tie the two anchors either with a swivel or something and you drop both so so one is going like this one's going like this so you drop this one so they go like that then and then basically you create a mooring so you use you, you have an anchor going up like this or a chain going up and the boat will just swivel like on a mooring ball now the issue of that is it's, it's it's a very good idea and it works very good in limited space like maybe here i should have done that because then i don't need to worry about those guys but the thing is many times 
this road that you put out your primary anchor you put out is chain in our case 10 millimeter chain so it's quite heavy it's quite good strong all of those things but it's heavy if i go out say this is now the, the 20 meters you go out and you set your anchor now you go out 20 meters more and this is the mistake that many people make so if you want to do this your secondary road for your secondary anchor has to be matching the distance that you put out now here. So if it's only on a line, on a rope, mean like these things. Uh, wait, wait, let's do it like this one. So this is a dynamo. So it will not stretch, for, first of all. <laughs> but it's super strong, but it will also float more. So from, from here, if, if this is the boat here, and this is the anchor, it will go straight like this and this means your anchor will not set normal like a normal chain with a normal chain because a normal chain anchor as you looked in my previous episodes rely that the road is going like this and the anchor will dig with with the shank parallel to the to the um, road or to the sand the bottom the moment you stretch this up you're lifting you you you, you shank and if when you lift the shank you lift your fluke and when you lift your fluke your anchor is not sitting anymore so when you use a line a rope you have to make it as long as what the rope rules is saying it's not anymore chain rules it's now rope rules so I think it must be like 1 to 10 or something like that or 1 to 40 I don't know it must be a super long one so that it doesn't lift your shank and the moment it lifts your shank up, your fluke lifts up, and then you don't have that anchor anymore. So that's one thing that you need to be careful. On the primary anchor, you normally have a chain. So if you put your chain out, it works for the, say, 20 meters, if you want to have one to four scope on a chain. But on your, on your rope one, you have to have a much longer one. And then, <laughs> this, the other point is, most people, the secondary anchor, is like a, a fluke anchor or, or a catch anchor. It's definitely smaller and it's undergraded. Oh, it's not the same anchor, the same holding power as your primary anchor. So most people, when they upgrade from this anchor, because it doesn't hold that much, they got a very good one like a Rockna or a Mantis or whatever, and then they take this previous one as a secondary anchor. There's a reason why your first primary anchor is the good anchor and this one is for emergency anchor or something like that. So you must keep in mind that that secondary anchor doesn't hold as much as your primary anchor. Unless, of course, you like Sisu. And our primary anchor is a, is a 40 kilogram uh, mantis and our secondary anchor is a 50 kilogram anchor. So that anchor will definitely set better than our primary anchor. So for us, we were thinking of using our secondary anchors has to be much stronger because if we are in a blow or in a storm, I want to stay put at anchor. And this is why our secondary anchor is bigger and heavier. So that's the two things you need to keep in mind. When you drop it and you go back, you have to go back as long as your rope or the road. If you have a chain, it's, it's okay, but if you have a 10 millimeter chain this side and an 8 millimeter on this side. Remember that is not the same as your 10 millimeter chain. So keep the, the, the road that you're using, whether it's chain or rope, in mind. And then also keep in mind the holding power of your secondary anchor. Because if it doesn't hold, you will just go all the way and it will maybe catch your primary anchor and then foul it and then, whoops, there you go into the ocean. That will be the good one. The bad one will be you going to the rocks. So that's it for Bohemian. And I will put some links down below for a couple of guys that I think has done this perfectly. So Rigging Doctor is one of them. Distant Shores TV is another one. So I'll put the links down below and you can see how they do that. And you will also see my 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 points or my concerns with that with the rope road and with a secondary anchor that doesn't I mean there's no contest between a rockna and a fluke anchor it's just it's 
narcotics. Uh, okay, on a Bohemian, we can also get a V, so the Bohemian is 180. Let's talk about tandem anchors. So, tandem anchors. First of all, I don't believe in tam tandem anchors. And Panopi, I will also put the link down below, made a very good video, and you can just see here in this video, I'll from borrowed from Panopi, that it doesn't work. Um, so the reason why I think it doesn't work is you put your two anchors, basically tandem is your primary here and connect to your primary, a secondary anchor, so they will grab, both of them will grab like that. Now the same issue is happening, if this one grabs first and this one has not set, then when the moment your chain lift, it will just lift this guy out of the ground. The moment it goes out of the sand or the, the bottom, if it goes up, that one is dangling. It will never, never begin. So you will only be on one anchor thinking you're on two anchors, which is <laughs> defying the, the, the objective. The second thing is, the moment you put a side stress, so if there's a storm like normally you want to think if you put a tandem anchor down it will be in super bad conditions so you want to have extra holding power but in a cyclic storm like not necessarily a hurricane but most of the cyclic storms the wind will do this turn it will veer or back depends on whether which which side of the earth globe you are but if it does move your chain will also move and the moment your chain move and you have these two anchors and this one move like this it will break away and when this one is still set the same thing will happen this one will just go start floating up in the in the sea <laughs> not in the air and this one will be your primary anchor again so it doesn't work well when you veer it doesn't work well when you don't know which one sets first if it is your if it's uh, if if it is this one that sets first and that one sets second, then it's okay. If the wind stays in the same direction, the moment it veers and this one doesn't set and this one sets at that stage, then this one will also never set. So I don't believe in tandem anchors. There's many people that think it's good. My advice is don't go for tandem anchors. And this is it. I don't think I will bring out another video about anchoring, so I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, click the bell, do all of those things, and please share this, this videos with your friends. And thanks again for our Patreons. It is awesome to have you on board.